Good day, students. I am Mrs. Jai Simi Hadepeju, your economics teacher. Today's topic is international trade. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to 1. Define trade and state types of trade. 2. Define international trade. 3. Mention forms of international trade. 4. State reasons for international trade. 5. Mention advantages of international trade. 6. State disadvantages of international trade. And 7. Mention barriers to international trade. What is trade? Trade refers to exchange of goods and services between parties. It is buying and selling of goods and services between sellers and buyers. Types of trade. There are two types of trade. They are number one, internal trade, also known as domestic trade. It is also called home trade. This is a trade that takes place within the boundary of a country. Two, international trade. Our focus for today's lesson will be on international trade. What is international trade? International trade is exchange of goods and services between countries. It is also called external or foreign trade. Through international trade, a country can obtain goods that she has no capacity to produce. Items commonly traded are 1. Consumer goods, such as clothing, shoes, jewelry, and others. 2. Capital goods, such as machinery, furniture, and equipment. 3. Raw materials, such as cocoa, rubber, and others. 4. Food items. Other transaction involves services, such as travel and payment for foreign patents. Forms of international trade. There are two forms of international trade. One, bilateral trade. It involves buying and selling of goods between two countries, e.g. China and Nigeria. Two, multilateral trade. This involves buying and selling among many countries. For example, Nigeria has multilateral trade agreements with countries like United States of America, China, Russia, Britain, and Holland. Types or division of international trade. There are three types or division of international trade. They are 1. Imports. This is the purchase of goods from a foreign country into one's home country. For example, purchase of electronics from Japan to Nigeria. Number two, export. This refers to sales of goods from one's home country to a foreign country. For example, sales of crude oil from Nigeria to United States of America. Number three, entry port. This is a trade combination of imports and exports. Goods imported from one country can be re-exported to other countries after adding value to it. For example, Indian imports gold from China, made jewelry from it, and then export it to countries like Nigeria. In the next class, we shall be looking at reasons for international trade and advantages of international trade. Stay tuned.
Welcome back. Let us consider reasons for international trade. The following are the reasons why countries engage in international trade. Number one, inequality in distribution of natural resources. Different resources are found in different countries of the world. For example, Nigeria has crude oil, while Ghana has gold. This may necessitate international transactions among these countries. Number two, difference in climatic condition. Some countries are very cold, while others are temperate. Hence, certain crops are cultivated in different countries. For example, rubber and cocoa are found in countries located in the rainforest, while granite grows better in the savanna region. Number three, difference in the level of technology. The level of technology of some country is more advanced than others. As a result, Goods can be produced efficiently in large quantities and better qualities than others. Number four, difference in the cost of production. The cost of production varies from one country to another. This is the basis of comparative cost advantage, which states that a country should produce goods in which it has the lowest opportunity cost of production compared with the rest of the world. Number five, difference in skills and technical knowledge. A country may develop skills and technical know-how in the production of certain products than other countries. For example, Japan is very good in the production of automobiles. Lastly, number six, difference in human resources. In some countries, human resources are highly skilled and intellectually sound, whereas in other countries, they are physically strong. As a result of this, different goods will be produced by various countries. Let us now consider advantages of international trade. The following are the benefits countries derive from international trade. Number one, it serves as a source of foreign exchange. International trade is a major source of foreign exchange earnings through selling of goods and services to other countries. Number two, provision of employment opportunities. It creates employment opportunities as it attracts foreign investors who establish firms which employ citizens of that country. Number three, it generates revenue for the government. More revenue can be obtained from tariffs leveraged on imports and exports by the government of a country. Number four, it leads to economic development. International trade leads to importation of capital goods like automobiles and machineries, which can result in economic development. Number five, increase in standard of living. The general well-being of the people will increase because they have opportunity to get what they cannot produce. For example, Nigeria can import automobile and electronics from Japan, which can increase the general well-being of the people of the country. Number six, increase in variety of goods. Foreign trade brings about acquisition of variety of goods from different countries of the world. In the next class, we shall be looking at the disadvantages of foreign trade, that is international trade, and barriers to international trade. Stay tuned.
Welcome back. Let us consider the disadvantages of foreign trade. That's why the benefits derived from international trade. It also has its negative impact on countries of the world. These include 1. Importation of harmful goods. Through international trade, dangerous goods like hard and expired drugs, food may be imported into a country, which may create health problems to the people. Number two, unemployment. Newly developed industries may not be able to withstand competitions from foreign companies. This may lead to their collapse and mass unemployment to workers. Three, encouragement of dumping of goods. International trade encourages importation of undesired goods. Developed countries are capable of producing goods in large quantities and sell the surplus to developing countries at lower prices compared to local prices which results to dumping. Number four, collapse of infant industries. Newly established industries may not be able to withstand competition from foreign companies, which are bigger and are more efficient. Number five, overdependence on foreign goods. International trade can bring about overdependence on foreign goods at the detriment of homemade goods. For example, some Nigerians prefer imported goods to locally made goods. And lastly, number six, it leads to exploitation of poorer nations. Poorer nations may be exploited by richer countries in the area of price determination and quality of goods. Lastly, let us look at barriers to international trade. The following are hindrances to international trade. Number one, distance. Due to long distance between one country and another, costs of transportation of goods will increase and it takes several days or months before goods can be dispatched from one country to another. Number two, difference in currency. Different currencies are involved in international trade. Hence, fluctuation in exchange rates and non-availability of foreign currencies will affect international trade. Three, difference in language. This is a major problem to international trade because there will be no effective communication between businessmen from various countries. Four, too much documentation. Documents such as consular invoice, shipping notes, and bill of landing involves extra cost and time, which slows down the pace of transaction among countries. Five, Difference in weights and measures. There is no uniformity and standardization in measuring system. There is need for conversion, which may complicate business transactions among nations. Six, political instability. Frequent change of government, disagreements and war among countries are some of the factors that may cause instability, which may hinder trading activities among nations. With this, we have come to the end of today's lesson. Answer the following questions before the next class. Number one, what is international trade? Two, mention forms of international trade. Three, state five reasons for international trade. Four, Explain any five advantages of international trade. Five, state five disadvantages of international trade. And lastly, mention barriers 
to international trade.